presentation right now, and then after that we'll have on the presentation we can have during the round table. <coughs> Thank you all for joining us for our second set of the Public Information Centers. Uh, we got through Lindsay and Fenton Falls this week, and last but not least, Bob Cajun. Very happy to be here. Um, so my presentation outline will be, start with an introduction, I'll go over the study scope and objectives again. Uh, some common themes we heard from the, PIC, for the, from the first set of PICs, uh, maybe Bob Cajun may not, may not affect Cajun, it was just the common theme from all three uh, downtowns. Uh, I'll go over the study area inventory and utilization based off of our uh, traffic, uh, our parking counts that we did. Uh, we'll also go through the projected parking demand, how we determined it, and then our parking management plan, and then next steps moving forward. So I'm here today to ultimately present the draft uh, parking strategy findings, and then I'm going to to obtain feedback from uh, on our study recommendations. So our scope of work is to find ways to ensure adequate feature parking, supply, address stakeholder concerns, review parking service delivery models, and find ways to meet the growth and related to parking demands. Uh, so like I said, here's some common themes we heard from the first PICs. Uh, there's a perception of limited parking, especially in the summer. Uh, poor wayfinding signage for public parking lots, unclear where long vehicle parking is located, a lack of proactive parking enforcement, lack of accessible parking, and the variation in approaches to cash in lieu of parking. So, study area is bounded by King Street, William Street, Canal, and Sher Sherwood Street. Um, we also examined the areas north of the canal along Main Street, Front Street, Queen Street, and Joseph Street. So, taking uh, taking all that study area, the, we we uh, we observed a total of approximately 650 available parking spaces. Uh, this is our estimate based off of some of the lots not having uh, not having uh, pavement markings. So this is this was our estimate after observing six times and uh, determining that. Um, from that, public on-street parking is 275 spaces, off-street 75 spaces, and then private lots are, are 300 spaces. So uh, this is the, the study area. Uh, so like I said, we went out there six times. Uh, we counted in the winter, in December, and then in the spring we counted in June, and then in the summer we counted uh, end of July. And as anticipated, based on everyone's feedback from the first set of PICs, we observed the peak parking demand during the summer weekday. So if you were to take a snapshot of the absolute uh, worst time period, uh, we observed it from 12.30 p.m. till 1.30 p.m. in comparison to our win uh, winter and spring observations. So uh, as a system whole, that's a 66% utilization is what we saw, but if you were to break it down into the various parking types, it was 56% utilized on street, 77% utilized off street, and 71% utilized ex uh, for the, the private lots. Now, this is big picture. Um, there were some lots that were you know, at capacity and uh, some were underutilized, so the average of everything. However, if you look at this map, you can see where uh, the red, either the red streets or the red lots, that's where they were above 85% to 90% utilization. This is our effective uh, threshold that we use, effective capacity threshold that we use, uh, which represents uh, the, the point in time where uh, there's delays caused by people driving around looking for a parking spot. So we try to design to, to have uh, less than that percentage. So based off of our observations and uh, our, uh, our, traffic count, our parking counts, we, uh, 
we determine that some individual lots and street segments observed operate at or above, beyond capacity, where the, the ones in red. Um, and it's likely that some users perceive a shortage in, in parking at uh, some busier parking facilities. However, within a 200 meter walking distance, there is, there is parking uh, available. So under existing conditions, um, it's, uh, we believe the existing parking system is sufficient. So we uh, we completed uh, we com we uh, we determined future demand based off of the uh, 2041 growth management plan, um, and uh, based off of the uh, 2041 anticipated population. It is more on the aggressive side, but we we went with uh, with designing this this uh, aggressive approach with the intent that it, that we ask uh, Corth Lakes City to uh, to monitor and see if the growth patterns are. As, as such, and uh, and uh, determine what to do based off of uh, what they're observing. And from that, we saw that uh, the demand will exceed this 85% threshold by about 15 spaces in 2041. So, uh, without the parking management plan, we anticipate that the um, all three, both on street parking, off street parking, and the private lots, will be at or above our. Uh, our 85% threshold. So in situations like this, you would fall into the middle category where, um, between the middle and the end, where we would come up with a parking management, parking management plan and uh, these recommendations, if they are, um, we would test these out and if they're not being, um, if they're not making things better, we would go into other aggressive actions such as paid on street parking and ultimately this doesn't apply here but a parking structure or something like that. So these are our recommended changes. So we heard we heard about the staff taking over all the on streets, on street parking, the, the good spots and whatnot. So we'd like to introduce an on street parking limit of two hours, just like Lindsay, and this would be uh, year round since it's an employee thing and not, not from our understanding, not a tourist thing. Um, but that can only work if there's proactive enforcement of the on-street parking. So we also would like to uh, have, have Corinth Lakes to consider uh, the handheld license plate recognition to, in order for them to efficiently uh, monitor and digitally chalk the, the parked vehicles. Um, we'd also like to create more regular spaces and long vehicle parking. Um, with the redevelopment of Bob Cajun Beach Park, uh, we'd like to see if there's opportunity for, for more regular spaces there as well as the long vehicle spaces. Um, and then this is something we will discuss over the round table. One of our ideas is to uh, potentially see if uh, you'd like to introduce a time limit um, of maybe two hours similar to the road, however, in discussion, as well as um, for Aaron to deputize you or, or, or someone on, on the team in order for you to be able to enforce the parking lots yourself. And then for Kortha Lakes as a whole, uh, we're still working on the cash and lieu aspect of things, uh, but one thing that affects all three downtowns is the lack of wayfinding signage in order for you to find where, where to park. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, have a, we have some high level recommendations for wayfinding in addition to a potential uh, wayfinding signage strategy. Um, in addition to that, uh, I'd like to add the municipal parking lot locations on Google Maps, create an online parking map, um, as well as uh, some few other things like snow plowing. Oh, and the big one is we would like to uh, have Kawartha Lakes increase the uh, parking fines from overtime par uh, for overtime parking, which is staying longer than the limit. So if we introduce the two hours, they stay longer. Uh, right now it's $30, so increase it to 40 as well as overnight parking. It's $20 now, increase it to 30 And the point of this is to, to get people to take, the, to, take the, uh, to take it more serious, and it's right now a little lower than average of uh, various municipalities we saw for our best practices review. So in conclusion, uh, we believe that with our recommendations, uh, the supply is anticipated, anticipated to operate below the 85% uh, utilization threshold. And um, 
we also, uh, if, if it's not sufficiently distributed and accommodated, we recommend that uh, the purchase of land for additional public parking should be considered um, after reviewing, uh, after implementing our recommendations and seeing how things, how things go and determine, uh, determine it based off of that. So next steps, we're going to review our preliminary recommendations, uh, taking everything into consideration in our roundtable discussion and uh, public feedback, staff feedback, and then we're going to finalize our study conclusions and recommendations, and then we're going to create a draft implementation plan, we're going to send it to Parthur Lake's staff for review, and then we'll have the draft study and final study, and then present it to uh, City Council. And I mentioned it earlier, but not everyone was here. Uh, project manager is Peter Richards. He had to leave on emergency, but please feel free to contact him if there's any questions you'd like to uh, get answered. Um, uh, if, if it's not uh, something directed to me and I'm not able to answer, please feel free to contact him. Uh, thank you. So maybe we'll do, uh, we'll set up the round. Just sit all over there, and that way I can take notes, and then we can go with questions then. Maybe we could uh, start with introducing ourselves. I hope that was Steve, you first. And I'm Steve Black, Steve's Barbershop in Bog Asian. I'm Harvey, I'm an economic element. Ryan Peoples, co-owner of Food Lab. Dave Poole, Buckeye Sports and Motel beside it, and Fourth Lifestyles in Rebecca Mustard, Economic Development. Donna Wood, Chamber of Commerce President and Wood General Legal Law Office. And I'm Fadi Maddy, and I'm with IBI, and I've been working on this project from the get go, and I remember everyone, I think I met everyone, and I know you from the email and your great recommendations, so thank you for that. Okay, so maybe we could uh, start with some general questions, get that, get that uh, through, and then I have four questions for us to discuss that are specific uh, to help you with uh, our feedback with our recommendations. Um, if everyone wants to get started, I'm just going to take notes as well. Based on what you said and your signage, I have to disagree with the fact that you think it's underutilized. Um, your little time studies don't address our particular needs if there was a few spots in place, but what you're failing to see is we are not getting our customers in the store because if we're at 85 or 100% capacity. Nobody's watching where these people are going. We do, and they're not in the store. And then we get complaints that customers can't come in because what people want to shop they have a buggy full of groceries. They're not going to walk to 300 meters with that cart, and let, you know, unless they're carrying it. Even that's a struggle sometimes. So it's not addressing that aspect of watching where these cars are parking and where it's where the people are going. And they know they're not the vast majority in peak times are not coming in our store. And our regular customers say we won't go anywhere near your store Friday, Saturday, Sunday because it's very difficult to get parking. So the little value. Room. So ultimately, that's the issue for us. And compounding that, we have a very difficult time of getting our deliveries into the store. We've had instances where trucks will have to wait an hour, hour and a half to try and get in because they just can't navigate back in and off of William Street because there's cars up and down it and you, can't, you cannot turn a 53 foot trailer in there. And then we've had they get in, then they can't get out. They're stuck for hours. We've had that happen, yes. and it's very frustrating. So, you know, and then people can't even get out the lot because I got a 53 foot trailer just sitting there idling, but he can't move. So, <clears throat> me complaining about this—it's a waste of time. There's nothing that you guys can do to solve that unique problem there. So we have some ideas that Aaron. To well, I understand that, but yeah. us to at least the lot yeah. doesn't solve the physical problem of cars being in there that exceed the time limit. Yes. It, you know, it's just. I agree with Brian. I think, I mean, you, when you did your study and you stood in our parking lot 
did you watch the cars that were in the parking lot or did you watch where the people were going? Uh, we we count the cars specifically. Okay, we don't so do yes. So that's you a didn't different. watch that where the people were going. You didn't sit in our store and watch the people park in our parking lot and go right through the breezeway out to Bolton Street and then come back again. Yeah. Mm, I I appreciate that. That's what's happening, and it's very you know. Putting myself in your shoes, I I understand. I can only imagine how it is being in a store. I know you mentioned last time you third your whole lots. You know you have. So many vehicles, and then you go into your store. There's only two, three customers. Exactly. If that, totally and the downtown store. core is packed, which is great. I like that. I get that. Yeah. But I wish there was a solution that would be fair to our customer base. Yes. So. And I'm a customer. I, know. I, agree, I agree with everything that Brian just said yeah. because it's packed in the summer, and I do see people park where you are. No, of course, and they're going to look for the closest spot available. Yeah. And I think for you to police your own business, I can't do definitely it. Definitely not. Good. It's it's that is going to bite me in the ass like nobody's business because all of a sudden I tick the wrong person off. Yeah. And who's to say? And rightly so, they go in, they go to have something to eat, they go to Big Lou's, they shop, and then they might be gone for two or three hours. Who knows? Then they come in, they buy something in our store. Yeah. Pack a gun. Exactly. So I can't do that. I just, it just won't happen. I just can't see that being a viable solution. And the labor costs associated. Oh, yeah. No, with that too. Somebody in yeah. the parking lot. Policing. Yeah. Policing it. So. But it's does that money have good? Hmm? But a two hour limit is, is great. Unless, unless I enforce it. But right. still, that's two hours for a customer grocery shopping far exceeds the need. It really does. Yeah. And if there is an option for of the lakes by law enforcement to have access to your property and police it themselves through yeah. an agreement with you. Yeah. Would that be something you would take into consideration? As long as, as long as we spell out exactly what it's going to happen, because yes, like I just said, that point where they could be shopping elsewhere, use us as the last stop, and we ticket them. Yes. Or they use us at the first stop and then go do something else. It you know it's that. There's a big gray area there, sure, but yes. And we do totally appreciate that and yeah. understand the uniqueness with Yeah, well, the other point is where, where are you going to find the bio offices? Yeah. You have twelve bio offices, okay, and because they're a bunch of snowflakes, they have to go in twos, okay, for this really dangerous job that they do. So you've now limited yourself to six affected bio units trying to police sixteen townships, including Lindsay. You don't even see a bio officer in Bob Cajun for Christ's sake. I mean, come on, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? It, it, it's actually a disgrace. The turnout of this meeting is an absolute disgrace. It's a reflection on the city for improper advertising. You should be asking questions why there's so few people at this meeting. The city allows businesses to bribe the city out of parking, uh, creating parking spots. I'm talking about the Grand Hotel, okay, and the lawyer's office that had a reduced fee for creating parking. Okay, you've got an engineering department with 18 people in there uh, who are reducing parking spots every time they upgrade a street. We lost 30 parking spots on Main Street because they wanted to put a sidewalk in that nobody uses. Okay, and now we're paying this guy $100,000 to find parking spots. Maybe you should address your own issues first. Okay, uh, this, all this work could have been done by staff. Okay, we've wasted $100,000. It's just, it's just counting parking spots, folks. This is not rocket science. Okay, you averaged everything, which has made a complete waste of this study anyways, because you're not dealing with specific areas, like the island where David and I are. Okay, that's a horrendous issue. We've got the Bob Cage and the old post office is going to be a brewer, a retail outlet. That is going to be a freaking nightmare by that lock gate, and you're not even addressing it. Okay, I told you where you could find parking spots between Front Street and the dam. This was planned a long, long time ago by Bob Cage and Council when they put the fire hydrants in. We went through amalgamation, and I've been going on at the city for years to put those parking spots. That's another 35 parking spots that people come into with an easy walking access. Uh, Gordon's Yacht Marina, the West Street um, uh, Lodge. There's no parking. So they come around, they park in front of my place. It's the, it's the closest double lot. So you get a pickup truck and a boat trailer from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. There's my entire uh, uh, summer business is, is shot to hell and there's no bio to enforce it. 
This is this is a waste of money. It's been an absolute joke, and you're not coming up with any solution. You're not even going to deal with a specific area. Now I ask for you to put parking meters in that uh, you don't have to man them. These are silent policemen. Okay, they keep people moving because the people coming up here from the city they used to tag and tow. Okay, if they see a parking meter, they're going to respect that maybe a lot more than a local person is. And Two hour parking signs don't don't work. We tried them uh, with Bud Reed. I don't know if you remember that day. We put two hour parking signs up, and we begged them to put the parking meters up. When we went to the city of Course Lakes, we lobbied the city just to leave the parking meters there. Mm -hmm. Don't force them. Just pick up the money out of the meter. They they do the work by themselves. It's perfect. And now you've averaged everything out and said, okay, eighty five percent utilization, and you're not. So I need to clarify this average. So it's averaged up there because I only have so much time. However, if you to present, however, if you look at that map, you see the actual number for every single. So I have every single number for every single lot and every single street. However, we're not going to sit here for 20 hours for me to go through every single one. So, so, so what are you going to do about that particular issue? Average. About the uh, about, about the island with Davis and where I am and Donna. Mm -hmm. well, what are you going to do to address that? Well, I'm taking your information right now. Go back and, and see what, what else we can do. Well, you know, that's why we paid a hundred thousand dollars up front to, to have you. Uh, I mean, do, do you see this? How back with the soul is? <laughs> I mean, am I the only crazy one at the table here? Holy jumping. There's, there's a couple of issues. Can I add to that, Steve? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of issues in addition to that island situation. We're not the only uh, stakeholder in here, obviously, but, but the, I'm discouraged at the fact that you guys always come up with the concept of. Free parking. I hate free parking. I hate it because there's no revenue. Now we're talking about bringing bylaw officers into town, which they never come anyways. Bob Cage is the well west in the, in the summertime, so everybody parks everywhere, including once in a while us with trailers and stuff coming and going. We're guilty of the same thing. That said, um, it is the well west. And what you're proposing is a two hour limit. I read the article on Facebook about the bylaw guy in Lindsay saying he's got a, some kind of an estimate to make sure vehicles are moved every two hours. That's ridiculous. Pay display parking is the answer to the solution. You guys are saying it's not a crisis situation. It is in Bob Cajun in the summer, not the winter, not at all, not in the fall, not in the spring, in the summer. And you guys and us involved also have two big B and B or Air, Airbnbs right across the street, right across there. They're, they're out of compliance with zoning in that property. You know the property I'm talking about. They're out of compliance. They, I, the other day I drove by, there were seven vehicles parked out there. Every one of them staying overnight. They're not zoned for it, and the city will never check them. Orange That's it. The, the big tall building across the street. The orange one? Yeah. Airbnbs, they fill them with every weekend. Every weekend, Airbnb. And the property across from us, good guy, but you know what? He's Airbnb in too. He's got three vehicles in there, or four vehicles, is on for one. So that, that property, that big tall orange building, I don't know the people, I'm sure they're nice people, but they, they don't use it for that. It's all rented. Now they've got a garage above that for additional parking too. There's, there's upwards to 10 vehicles parked in there every weekend. I'm not sure about that. I can check. I'm not sure. I've been told that by two different people, one really? of them being a tenant, so. One of, one of those being a tenant, yeah. tenant. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. She was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, but anyways, getting back to the whole thing, I don't believe the solution to the parking Bob Cajun is bringing bylaw guys in here and God knows we pay them with no revenue. I don't know why government always suggests we're going to do this, but we're not going to create any revenue. TSW did this a few years ago, trans giving the locks away for a whole year. Then they have the next year, the lock masters don't make enough money because they didn't have any revenue. Like, for goodness sakes, I mean, the only way we get by law people into town is to pay them. If they get paid, they'll they'll do their job. But you know, that said, why would we why would we pay these people to come with no revenue? It's it's crazy. The the city do stupidest things. I mean the beach park, for example, they kept out all the trailers, they got no revenue. It's sitting there vacant. They're gonna spend millions of dollars on a property that's not gonna get used to the degree it should be, and there's no revenue. Again, it's about revenue, pay display, and move traffic, period. Employees won't park there because they have to pay, period. They'll find a free spot. Am I right? Period. Simple solution. And the meters did that. They moved traffic. All the city had to do was turn a key and open the meters. They had two people doing it, as Steve said. But nonetheless, there was money there. And I, I have, in our business, we have um, 14 rental vessels. On a, su on a sunny summer in July or August, we have 14, roughly 15 vehicles come and park in front of our place or around our place. 
They all expect to pay. Where do I, where do I pay? Where do I park? They go to the meters, they look at the meters, they haven't been open for weeks. They open, they expect to pay. People from the city that come here expect to pay. You know, and why not do it free? Like, that's just boneheaded as far as I'm concerned. Sorry to say. They do expect to pay up from the city. They're always asking me. They come knock on my door. What do you say? Pay? You know, does the meter work? I remember you Yeah. Well, the irony is that the only time I will come into the village of occasion in force is on a fair night. Well, any time when there's a major fair, when we've invited people to this town, we've invited them in to come to the fair, and they come down and they shoot fish in a barrel, and they'll ticket everybody. And it's like, it's unbelievable. And that's the only time you see them when they kind of make a buck on the whole deal. Yeah, yeah. You never see them unless it's Midnight Madness or maybe some big event, tourist event. That's the only time you see them. Yeah. You don't see them ever, ever, ever. So to clarify this part of the conversation, because Bokajian has very different views on pay parking to other communities in the city, and all communities are entitled to their own uh, opinion, and that's part of this study. So for, for Bob Cajun, as business owners, you would prefer to have pay parking on the street and then... Only if, it, I, again, I'm a, a minority voice here, but you would have to, you would have to put meters in the lot because if you, because then all of a sudden, You're I'm going to fill first before, but if it, that, that, that yeah. was my fear coming here, that that might be a proposal, but then you'd have, you have to meter my lot where it's going to make you but Brian, that's going to affect you because then they're going to go shop at the other. I understand that, but boy, if the whole entire outside of my lot gets metered, you know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. Yes, and that is one of yeah. one of the things that we, we did look at. So, but I'm like, I could somehow as a problem is token it. There has to be a solution if we meter the lot. So. Well, another unspoken issue that, uh, and this is the original uh, reason why we had parking meters in Bob Cajun. Okay, is because the employees would park in their neighbor's parking spot. Okay, and of course they started the war. They solved the, 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 solved the issue perfectly with the parking meters. Uh, Bill Bylaw, the, um, uh, uh, sorry, Bill Gentle, the bylaw officer, uh, was great. He would just give you a 15 minute warning. He wouldn't give you an actual ticket, just a 15 minute warning to move along on the meters. Then there was a guy on getaway gear, and he said the meters were crushing his business. The meters came out again. Well, guess what? In 10, 12 years since that happened, we've got the same problem where employees are now parking in front of their neighbors' businesses. And it's, it's, it's so frustrating. We all know what it's like when you have you, you see your neighbor, they won't park in front of their place because they know they're going to leave it up for business, but they'll park in front of your place. Mm -hmm. You can't get by law to address that. It's the employers have to address that. And if they won't address that, parking meters to the only and you know they're probably the best middle ground passive uh, parking control mechanism that you have okay by like I say by law roads are expensive and it's hard to get them in the right place at the right time those meters stand there 24 hours a, a, a day and what we used to do you see they would go in May 2 for and they would come out on the Labor Day weekend to make room for the sidewalk snow plow because you don't need them winter time so it was perfectly tailored to our particular situation because we were our own village and we had our own bylaw and our own council. Now that we've gone to City Quarter Lakes, what you what you presented here is an, a wonderful example of blurring things with averages. You're trying to use a cookie cutter to solve every village's problems and you're not listening to our unique situation here and responding to it and promising us you're actually going to listen to some of our uh, recommendations like the parking. That can be so easily done. The parking down by the locks. And it's really, what you're saying is really important, and that's actually why Fanny is here and has gone around to every single community, the three that are part of this study, is genuinely to listen to you. So putting onto the table what worked in the past, what you hope would come back, the challenges of what's here every day, that needs to be put on the table so that it can become part of this study. And Council has approved this study, Council has endorsed going through this study, so we are a long way through it. So the more that we get on the table today and hash out the issues, the better the results are going to be and the recommendations, and then that gives Council something to put together. And the recommendations as they come out are different for every community. So these now end tonight at the public meeting and all of the feedback that's come in until today and going forward is all about how we tailor the Cajun issues to meet 
the concerns that you have with Occasion to make business flow better, the community and the downtown flow better with regards to parking. Yeah. So um, keep bringing the ideas out. Yes, ultimately it's three different studies. There are some things where it's correlates to the whole, for example, parking fines. So that would be a that would affect the three the, the three downtowns as a whole. However, it's three separate parking studies. Well, we've got all due respect, there's only one problem here, and that's there's 110 voices missing from this table. Okay, there's about 115 businesses involved, Cajun, and there are four businesses represented here at the round table. It's a very well made point, Steve, and it is acknowledged, yes, and other voices need to be heard. Yes. You'll hear them after the fact, though. That's the problem. After everything's said and done, then you're going to get complaints, which is the problem. I'm concerned about the fact that you guys don't see, as Brian mentioned earlier, the, the, the emergency or the necessity of that overcapacity. The next strategy, the aggressiveness you talked about. I, I don't see it not being aggressive. It is. It should be aggressive, but only in the summer. There's no point in being here in the wintertime. There's not a vehicle on the main street, or very few in the wintertime. But in the summer is where it needs to be addressed. If there are going to be four studies done or four different visits, they should have all been in the summer. I'm sorry, I'm just saying, you know, that's when it all happens. Generally, Fridays are bad, Saturdays are bad, um, Sundays are bad. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe through the week, I don't know. I, I believe we can day, like July 1st, yeah. instead of, no matter what day it falls on, yeah. it's like a weekend. Yeah. So that's the only exception. In addition to that, in addition to that, I don't know what kind of numbers they have in this Airbnb thing. Everybody I know in the vicinity of us are all running out Airbnbs now. And that adds added properties, that adds added um, use of, of lot spaces that aren't really planned for. I mean, parking lots are, they're being filled with Airbnb people. But then if it's a pay and display, then that looks after that, right? And it gets for overnight parking. That well, I, I just don't believe in any service, like hiring a bylaw officer to do a job, there needs to be revenue to pay for it. There, if there's no revenue, then that comes out of tax dollars. You guys are gonna be inundated with these people coming tonight saying, okay, who's paying for this guy? Where's the revenue coming from? That's what the, there has to be revenue. And the, the people are willing to pay it. That's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. That's the whole thing I don't get. Because I think, under, with the exception of Brian's situation, I think it would alleviate a lot of problems. Maybe not yours, but I think they would alleviate a lot of it. And there must be a solution to yours as well, in addition to that. Parking news. I agree. I agree. In my law. I totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. I advocated meters. When my father was like three years ago, they advocated it like crazy. And then, then it got moved out just to the just to the island. I, we were accused of being on our own, trying to revenue. That was the reality. It was to move traffic, not to gain revenue, but to move traffic. That was the purpose. Can yeah. I ask a, a question about the, uh, having paid parking meters? Uh, do you have concern that just if your lot alone is is uh, paid parking, so if you have parking meters on your lot alone mm -hmm. with all the other private lot, if the other private lots do not agree, because it's a separate entity, right? It's okay. everyone has to agree with. Are there any concerns with, with that? No, because what I really have to study what private lots you're talking about, sure. but I believe that big lot we have is the only issue for the parking downtown. Sure. Nobody that wants to shop at our store is going to park way out here or wherever these other private lots are. We are in that unique situation where it's a perceived public parking lot and it's not. So if you were to put some meters in there, then we obviously I have to go with I believe the I believe Dave said it, the, the entire town, the court has to go meter. Has to. But I have to be part of that. Or it's going to make my problem even worse. But the same token we have to have, we have to have some sort of um, a plan that our customers are going to be able to get out of the parking lot without paying. But if everybody's paying and it's a unique situation, but they won't be paying no, value mark. I get that, and that's you. We have. I really have to think that out. Mm -hmm. But if they're parking in front of Bigley's and they're going in there and they're paying, and and they will, are they going to? 72 to have a meal and they're paying. That's no problem. That's expected. Everywhere else seems in this whole Ontario. You want to go to an establishment, you want to go to a show in the city, you pay to park. It's just common sense. So I don't see that being a detriment 
So with a pay display system, could they not tailor the system to accommodate the retail store that's directly involved? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. There's okay. there's many options. That's what I'm yeah, asking. So not the yeah. not the coin meters. Right. It have to be a multi multi space meter. So there's a smart meter that allows you to, you know, um, do various different different things with the back end software to be able to. You mm -hmm. know, it could be um, attached with. The receipt with the receipt or, or something like that. So right. there's definitely a thirty option. minute grace period for yeah. the proximity of the store would be a, a maybe yeah. One there has to be so there'd be a, that's yeah. that's the best way to do it. Yes. Right. You know, like yeah. what, what's the average your your, your customer spends? Fifteen minutes, thirty minutes. Like what are you? <coughs> a big shop, I can't see it being more than forty five minutes. Okay, so let's say thirty minutes free just to get yep. your turnover higher. Yes, and then after that, and then it doesn't matter who's parking. There. Right, they right. come in if they, if they come or not. It's the idea is to increase the number. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I definitely support pay display 100%. That's what I feel. So, so what I did when the meters were there, uh, and any customer was put out, I had to sit down on my counter with quarters, and I just kept on cutting quarters to put it on. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Simple enough. Exactly. I've done that before too. If we get to that, mm -hmm. then we find solutions for that. Yeah. There's smart cards, there's a lot of various ways uh, for yeah. us to do that. Yeah. Then you can add, in addition, let's say, uh, if you don't, your resident, the residents of Bob Cajun to pay, you can set it up in a, in a way where they they would be able to park for free to, you know, to go there or, to, or, or whatever they need. So mm -hmm. there's various uh, options, and that's based off of you know having that consultation um, because your situation is very very unique it needs to be needs to be discussed offline with what you what makes sense to you right. and the pros and cons for each situation right, right. so I'm taking, I'm taking and feedback I, and there's yeah, and I probably have to get counsel from Sobeys because they're obviously a stakeholder in this and I would have to I'd have to be in touch with, with their This, this is what the town's planning. This is what we feel is a definite need. Okay, because as, as they do not own yeah. the parking lot, they definitely have a big stake in what goes on there. Sure. So I would just have to clear. I really have to go through them. They have other other stores where this, you know, cottage stores, as I said, they yeah. have the same issues. So but sure. I, I really don't know how they address each and every one. So. Maybe that's that's the discussion that needs yeah. to be to be had with yeah. you know, with you with the uh, Soviet Council, yeah. with Aaron, you know, yeah. and figure out the, the best right. approach that's not going to affect you, impact you where there, you know, you have all these rules that's causing them to go elsewhere. Right. But at the same time, you know, you have that relief and release that stress from you know walking into your store and there's only two people and your whole lot's full. Yeah, but, and that being said, I'm just, if we meter the lot, you're still going to have that person who's going to drop their quarters in and they're not going to come in our store. Yeah. That's, I think, just a fact of life. Yeah, right. That's, I can't yeah. change that. Yes. But it's going to get movement, as Dave and Steve yes. says. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And turnover. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But you could tailor the software in that system to say 30 minutes grace period in your parking lot could, by virtue of your company. You know what I mean? Right. That would be a grace period offered by you, paid by you. That would be some kind of incentive there, I think, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's very. I think there should be machines where there's a barcode, for example. Let's say there is a um, <coughs> with the parking card where there's some. Don't quote me on it. I'm pretty sure that that's. There would be some sort of way that you would have something unique on your receipt that would allow them, or maybe it's an extra card or something that you just have to deal with in the summertime, right? They would be able to scan it's 30 minutes paid for or something. There there are options there. Mm -hmm. And that's great because what the present is not working. <coughs> so. I'm still kind of surprised that all the other communities would support the fact of buying well the city for that matter, buying property or buying infrastructure to support parking without revenue. I'm back to the revenue thing. I can't believe that we're paying for people to come in here Heaven knows how much we're paying them without revenue. I'm a revenue guy. I believe you have to pay for something in order to have it. That's my thing. 
Well, you can go to any major city, it's just a gimmick. So yeah. you, you just get out of the feed where you just get out of your car and you put the two dollars in the pay and display and you don't even think about it. It's just, right. every way, everywhere you go is pay and display now. Right. Because we it's not only not a lady, you need to manage that. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, from what you hear in the news, not about 95% of the population are pretty honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they do see a need for, you know, a reasonable parking, reasonable parking controls. But, you know, what I find interesting is given that uh, in the Bob Cajun secondary plan, they want to push Bob Cajun from approximately 3,700 people to 15,000 by 2030. Okay, where, where do you get the number 15 parking space increase by 2041? <laughs> where, where, where do you get that thing from? That surprised me too when I saw that on the report. I was like, too surprised at that. I mean, we've got 250 homes going in on West Street alone. Most of those people are going to be have mobility issues. All, they're not going to walk from there into the into the village to shop. Mm -hmm. This this 250 parking spaces potentially, even if only 10 percent came in, you know, on any given day, there's 25 people. That's that's all the 15 parking spots in 20 years. city. Like for example, if Bob Cajun collects say $100,000 in two years for parking, I wouldn't want to think that that went to Lindsay. You know what I mean? That's not fair. You know, if we if we take the brunt of that charge, and this happened in Fountain Falls years ago, I had a store in Fountain for a while, they had $97,000 in the parking fund. When they amalgamated, Lindsay took it, or the city took it. They, it didn't show up at all. So the, the people, the retailers paid the price of that and it got, it got annexed out of them. So that's not fair. So. In that answer to your question, yeah, if the money stayed in town, I would advocate that. If it didn't, I wouldn't. Period. It's not fair that the, that our business pays or our business pays the the brunt of it and goes off to Lindsay Coffers. That's not fair. So that brings up another point: that we put parking meters and food and parking lot. Where does that money come? Is it your property? Well, it's your it's money. Private property. That's what I was thinking. <clears throat> Where does that go? It has to stay in Bob Cage. I don't know what happens. I, think I understand that, 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 but that's the unique part of the thing is of me giving a private law. Yeah. Because it must be, because then you're dealing with bylaws. Do you have to have maintain a minimum number of parking spaces? So if that would that would mean that it's now a quarter lake slot and then you're below that. So there's, there's I think it would be private and then not the money would go towards you. Like it's, so if they're building a parking garage in Lindsay, mm -hmm. if they're going to build a parking yeah. garage, where's yeah. the revenue coming from? Uh, so we've had uh, a big discussion with that with them because we asked them the same thing. So we don't think, based on our recommendations, we don't think they need a, a parking structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we presented uh, five different options for them, um, and it's through the tax levies, BIA levies, development charge. Cash and Lou and uh, on street paid parking. So, if they were to bring on street paid parking, uh, that money could, could be collected to go directly to the structure. Um, uh, the, the one that, uh, that we had the uh, biggest, uh, the one that we had the uh, biggest positive feedback from uh, is potential BIA levy. So, the BIA would collect the, the money from the owners and then that, that money would ultimately go towards the property. They've got a pretty strong idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't know. I can't see the money staying in vacation. I can't see that ever happening in ever in the world of dreams. But, you know. I don't think that'll be part of the deal. No. Be part of the money stays here. I don't think it'll come down. But that's fair, though. It right? is fair. It's totally yeah. fair. Well, and you have to remember, so before we amalgamated, we did have our parking issues resolved. 
Okay, we had a good council, we had the parking issue to be taken care of, and they were talking about adding new spaces. Uh, we had a good council, man. Bob Cajun was a good, proactive council. And when we amalgamated, all of a sudden, you had to relook at everything. And you did you haven't bothered to consider. Again, like I say, you can see by this meeting, you're just not considering our local issues here uh, that are very specific to Bob Cajun. Mm -hmm. So we would like you to go back to the results that we had already come up with before we amalgamated, and uh, not question the wisdom of the businesses that have, that were, that have been here for a long time. Fennons was good too, and it was it was taken from them. I know they had a lot more money in their treasury than the Volcano did at the time I took. Mm -hmm. They had like over 100 grand in there. It disappeared. They they used that revenue to buy additional parking spaces, as what Volcano wanted to do as well. They wanted to buy properties outside the the perimeter, or okay. in the perimeter, I should say. Yeah. Well, all, all the Volcano debentures got absorbed into Lindsay too. There was outstanding debentures at the time of the amalgamation. They were, they they evaporated into Lindsay's. Yeah. Oh yeah. So back to what was great about the parking situation. Uh, you mentioned it was paid parking. It was, great there, was paid parking, but we also had a great bylaw officer, uh, again, who was proactive. If, if you saw a meter that was over the limit, he just put a 15 minute warning. It was a very nice, thank you for coming to Bob Cajun. It's great to have you here, but please, you know, uh, make room for other people. Mm -hmm. It was a very polite, people People would comment on it. They come in and you still go, this is a great bar. It was like an advertisement for Bob Cajun. It just kept everyone aware of the situation and the parking issues you, we have, and uh, in a very polite way. Yeah. But we had those, he was a regular resident. He walked up and he was in my place every afternoon to say hi. Mm -hmm. So he knew everyone's issue, and uh, you know, we've lost that personality, you see. We've lost that personal touch where he was had his finger on the button. Mm -hmm. That sounds very similar to the setup in Lindsay. Mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with, with the BIA. With the BIA, yes, yeah. the community liaison. has the same um, attitude mandate that, yes, he looks after parking, but he's also a community liaison. Mm -hmm. The yeah. business community, like the people who are visiting, there was a Facebook article the other day on him, mm -hmm. yeah, on that fellow. There's two of them, but the one fellow is the cat. Yeah, I read about that. But again, again, with all due respect, he's not getting any revenue for what he's doing. You know, that's the whole thing. I mean, other than late fees or whatever. But again, you know, this guy, unless he's volunteering, which I'm sure he's not, so somebody has to pay him. How's he getting paid? Through tax dollars? I don't agree with that. Part of, uh, Aaron is not here and he should really be the one to speak. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm taking the feedback and, yeah. and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have a discussion with Aaron. But this town is a wild west in the summertime. So to that point of the wild west and the things need to pay for themselves, mm -hmm. uh, what would it, how well received would a, an increased pilot presence be? How well received, or what should an increased, could an increased bylaw presence look like to support the parking situation? So proactive enforcement. You talk about all the positives with before I open the commission. Well, why, why, why on earth couldn't you just, uh, you know, hire a temporary bylaw officer for, for three months? You only need to make well, that. That would be the intent. Yes. Yes. Until the Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Yes. And you got someone just walks around or hire a student. I mean, the next day you don't you don't need a qualification to see and take a fit. Photograph of people's plates, or if I say even just put a courtesy note on the car. Mo most people, I say, most people are okay if you just give them a little friendly nudge. You go, oh yeah, I never thought of that. We would just go in a bigger look and do a shop, go back out of a shop and never thought about it. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So I apologize that I didn't say it up there, uh, but it is our recommendation that it's only seasonal, um, you know, based off of what we observed in the winter time and what everyone, uh, the feedback we got. It's going to be required for the summer, not for mm -hmm. the winter time. So, yes. I well, I bet you if, you if you meet at the town, that will pay for your student <laughs> to come around and enforce the bylaw. Our rental customers come at 8 o'clock in the morning, there are boats, and they're there till 6. That's their rental day. They park there all day long. I would really not like to have them bring cars to us because it takes away from our business too, and everybody else's without respect. But I believe they should pay. They should pay and they expect to pay. So. 
So to Rebecca's question, if there was bylaw patrolling regularly in the summertime, if people were getting tickets more frequently, because that's bound to happen with regular patrol, how well received do you see that being? Well, because it misses the point. You know, you're, you're, you're actually punching someone after. Like it, that doesn't help us, okay, because they've already made that. They've already parked in front of that place for six hours and by what happens, fall through and put a ticket on there. Well, I, I don't know if that's going to prevent them. But I say certainly if you had a student walking around, like say putting courtesy notices and that kind of stuff, it's a lot more direct, it's right there. And um, yeah. So it would be on the proactive side, and it's not. It, it, it would ideally we would recommend that people would get warnings, kind of like the gentleman you had. You had uh, well, so the fair, you know, when you invite people for the fair, you don't want to put them off coming the next time by day for twenty five bucks. For goodness' sake, we we invited them to town. We wanted them to be here because they brought revenue into the town, and then it's like we got them bottled up so they're going to take advantage of them. No, we, you know, you don't you don't want to hit you don't want to hit people over the head with a hammer when all you need to do is give them a little nudge. So put the pay in display, I, I would prefer actually the, the individual parking meters. You get the student in for three months in the summertime, they collect the meters, and I will even give you Bill Gentle's little secret on how to make how to make real money in this town doing the parking pilot, and that is in the invalid parking spot. Bill pays entire wage on that one spot, mate. He go around twice a day, 600 bucks. Every single day someone in that invalid parking spot by your place. <laughs> I mean, you know, but that, joking aside, uh, I think that really would really work. It would be a lot more personal and it would cater to the needs of this village in particular. So, paid parking with a bylaw enforcement office? Uh, a sort of a student, a temporary student, not a, high, not a bylaw officer with benefits and all the rest of it. Just sure. a paid student for the summertime. So, if someone time. that's there part time with, the, with or without the meter, still, you guys, uh, because right now what we're recommending is before going and putting money into meters, start with having someone. Go around and just like you just said, like warn them and let them know that there's a new two hour limit. Um, this maybe this summer we're not going to be ticketing, but however, towards the end of the summer or next next summer where it's going to be fully enforced so that people have a, you know a season heads up. You're warning people, or maybe if there's there's patterns of specific people like employees and whatnot that they're getting ticketed and. So a mixture of that sort of. Well, why would you wait a year? We've all just told you the problem's happening right now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yesterday and all the years, but we don't want to wait another year for a, a solution. Come on. We're telling you what we want you to do. You, you know, you, you're, you're supposed to take the, this, advi uh, this advisory of the notice. We're telling you what we want you to do. We want somebody in town, we want all the parking spots metered uh, to control the traffic. Who's suggesting? I'm not telling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not asking. I'm well, you do, I, don't asking. Think, <laughs> I don't think we need to wait a year. If we're going to do it, implement it. Really. So impl implement um, paid on street parking. Yep. You don't warn people. They're not going to remember the following no. year. They're just, they're they just don't take, they'll take and leave. But you're better off just to do it right away. Point meters. Revenue. It's all about revenue. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about revenue. Okay. Sounds good. They're used to paying. They get out of their cars to go and pay in those meters. Mm -hmm. And they can't pay. This is, you weren't here for this part, and I'm, no, full, the I'm in full agreement with that, but my lot has to be included in that. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow, yeah. Because yeah. if you, we meter the entire core, mm -hmm. and I've got a private lot, yeah. guess what my lot now becomes? So I'm wondering if we can figure that out, even though it is a private lot, because it is used for public parking. Yes. If there's a way that we can do that. Kind of yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and Good. that's, that's I'm just bringing yeah. up the speed. I'm Excellent. full agreement, yeah. I agree. Because otherwise they'll sit in your lot. Exactly. So the city, sorry, no. uh, the city also hired a couple years ago some clowns in a security thing driving around giving tickets. They started that in the fall. That was that was not my place. Believe me. They were aggressive. It was a security car or something. Security car. Was it several years ago? Two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. They were they were oh. really they were part, they were ticketing people for parking. <laughs> <in the front. laughs> October, November. They didn't come in the summer. There was October, November, September, October, November. Because I got two or three of them. <laughs> oh no, that guy! In October, for heaven's sake! Oh, sorry. Thank you.
were they illegally ticketing or they were ticketing? They had they just right to it. It. No, they were hired by somebody to do it. Because they were hired by. Because that's the idea of proactive enforcement, right? You're, yeah. You're well, so again, this is what you're asking. Everybody. The fall is not an yes. issue. We're yes. back it's to. It's a summer. Sure. Okay. Are you doing July? Just the summer. So it would just be the summer, but it would be that. That sense, if you go over, you get a ticket because it's yeah. the law. You get a sure. ticket anywhere else in the province. You go over, yes, for like well, 45 dollars. I'll tell you what, you, tell you, what yeah. you could do you could take one of those kids that they had in the truck. Have you seen this truck in the city truck driving around? Three people in the truck, okay? There's a driver and there's two kids to change garbage bags. Yeah, they're seat. parked. Okay, one, one, but the, the city guy parks, one gets out of the with a bag in his back pocket, the other one takes the bag out. Take one of those, it's only a one man job, I knew, but take one of those kids and have them. Walk around in the summertime. Normally, right? it's two of them. They're with parks. They're the parks department, and because they're taking care of the parks, so it's not just not just what you see on the street. They just come around and do that. So yeah, but still one person job. They put the pack in the back of your pocket. Yeah, so but they, they wouldn't hire three people to do that. No, <laughs> but because there's two of them, they're also working in the parks. It's, so they're well, going from the area, going right? from a park to the to the street to the park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's other things that two of them are doing. So that's why there's two. Of them. So this is all great stuff. Um, I do want to make sure that we have time because I think this is going to be a big discussion as well. The Bob Cajun Beach Park. Mm -hmm. And if you think that if there's wayfinding signage and online maps recommending that people park there and long vehicle parking is moved there. I know you mentioned a few things so far with regards to revenue and whatnot. So I just want to get you know a good discussion going on with that. If you think that it will free up any space within, within Bob Cajun or if that's not um, uh, and you know, if they want to park all day, like with with if it's if it's paid parking on streets or whatever approach is taken, and, and there's more more rules within downtown. Um, by having that, uh, it would give people the opportunity to park there all day and then walk over. And then if if people want to just stay for an hour or two, they you know it frees up and brings turnover on on street. So. Um, do you think, the question is, do you think that Bob Cajun Beach Park would be something that people would end up using, um, be it regular spaces, parking all day and then walking in, or long vehicle parking, uh, moving there so that they're not, you know, I think you mentioned on the island, they're, they're taking over. Or they the boats. Yeah. So do you think that would be, that would be something, you know, they would be then, um, it could be some sort of proactive enforcement as well. That you can't park on the islands if you have long vehicle parking. You have signage, wayfinding signage, directing them to that uh, to that location. Do you think that would work at the beach park? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's more event based. I mean, I think if events happening over there, people will be more accustomed to parking. You know, um, the events that are run in the summertime, if they're Accustomed to parking over there, they'd be closer to the event itself. But that's my feeling. It's, it is a long way for people that simply want to be closer. But you know, event-based, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like they'll park over there if the event's near it. Sure. Um, now, understanding that if we were to have signage up that and have Kawatha Lake's website um, directing people with long vehicles to go park there and what do you think they would, they would listen? And then you add proactive enforcement. We don't have a lot of long vehicle parking there. So I've just seen the new plans for it. There's not a lot of long vehicle parking and it should be for the people who are paying their money to launch their boats. Because there'll be a gate to pay your money to launch the boats from there. So, and then you can park in there. There's not, we're not really encouraging the long vehicle parking because not necessarily are they spending a lot of money in town. They're you know, they're putting their boat in and then they're going for the day and mm -hmm. not necessarily even staying here. They're mm -hmm. leaving again. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to figure out somewhere for some long vehicle parking. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. The idea is someone who's coming through on their way camping mm -hmm. and they need somewhere to park the trailer that they're towing so that they can come in and, and shop. shop and get their groceries yeah. and do whatnot. And they park back on the street, street behind us. That's where I see them. Yeah, that's where I see them. What is that, oh. William Street? Yeah. yeah. Uh, William Street. Yes. But they also find them parking at the end of our lot, taking up double rows. Oh, uh, that, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And for the day? Or just no, for, just for long enough. Or yeah. yeah. Which is, yeah, it's, it's hard to police with mm -hmm. where they are, how long they're in. Mm -hmm. We did have a business owner call us and let us know that she had this issue with people bringing up their 
ATVs. Uh, yeah, trail, trailer made people ATVs. Uh, work with a car. She didn't have the room. But they were <coughs> and they left for the day, took the trailer. Well, they asked for permission to park in our lot overnight. And mind you, this was a couple of weeks ago. Yes, of course, it's not an issue, but thank you for asking yes. first, mm -hmm. which was great. And guess what? They bought all their groceries and their needs from us. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not an issue in September, October. No. The London <coughs> part is the option could be over at the arena, really. Because yeah. the beach part gets full. It's full. Because I'm by there every day in the summer. So the arena might be good on Saturday morning. It's not available, but the rest of the time it is. And the grassy area too there. Mm -hmm. right. Um, my only other question I want to make sure we get through, because the other one is pretty much in our general discussion, we cover it was food land discussion, as well as the uh, two-hour limit and enforcement and whatnot, so that was a great discussion. Uh, the other part is the fines that I had mentioned, so uh, to give you more, more detail, uh, so we completed a best practices review and looked at the parking fines for com comparable municipalities, and we saw that two of the fines in Coleta Lakes are a little lower than the average. One of them was <laughs> one of them was overtime parking, so that would be uh, parking longer than the duration you're allowed to park. So if two-hour limit was to come to Bob Cajun, um, uh, they would get currently in Coleta Lakes they get charged thirty dollars, but now it would go up to forty. And the idea is to make it more expensive than the cost to park because. One of the issues is people, if it's too low, people will just park and they just take their chances mm -hmm. because it's not that it's not that big of a thing. So we believe that, uh, so based off of our, 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 our assessment best practices review, um, we would like to recommend it goes up to $40. Um, anyone have any concerns with that? I'm concerned. concerned. If we're going to do pay display, they shouldn't ding them that hard. If you're going to ding, pay display, they shouldn't pay 40 bucks for additional you're already getting the revenue. You have to Can they do. put more money in after the two hours? Well, maybe they could do that. Yeah. They could do that, but you know, you're not going to ding them forty bucks if they're ten minutes late on a on a. If they paid pay display already, if that's where we're going, you shouldn't ding them that hard, should you? I mean, really. I think five bucks is five bucks is fair. I was two minutes late just off of Church Street, and it was forty two dollars. Yeah. Well, it's the way to police it. Yeah. They expect it. Yeah. They come from the city. They expect it. And I forgot because I don't live in the city anymore. I was like, shoot. Like, like uh, in my opinion, that, that if they pay a display fee, then there should be a, a late charge, yes, but not, not, not $40. Not no. They've got to remember, too, we're, we're, we're riding a very fine line here because we, we can't force people to come to Bob Cajun in the summertime. Okay, there are, are other options for people to go to. So if you, if you, if you make it too punitive, you know, so we, we've got to make the, the village attractive, and that's why the, the Bill Gentle thing was so good. We put it just a five minute warning and say thanks, but you know, please respect. Well, we do a three hour instead of a two hour then. I mean, it's. I think three is good because you can get a little bit more done than in, in two hours. Because in the summertime, yeah. two hours isn't going to get you very far. It might get you through the grocery store and the liquor store. So we're talking away from pay display or not? No, pay no. display okay. maybe a long time. Okay. Oh, okay. But like that yeah. the limit? Or yeah. it's saying, but if somebody wants to spend even more than that, but you should be paying. Yeah. They'd they have can to go back and more? They'd have to come back. Yeah, come back. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's it's saying, too much wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pay more money. There's, there's various there's options you can do. There's phone apps to adjust the apps. Yeah. 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 That's so right. there's there's third party there's third party pay by phone apps, hotspot. There's a bunch of them where it's pretty much little to no cost to the city and it's all it's just they come they put in the signage if you were coming you'd have the app and because some a lot of these apps are already being utilized in other cities yeah. tourists coming in and whatnot they probably already have an account so it's, they're, they're used to it kind of thing and you can mix that with residential permits if, if, if you want it you know so there's there's various options that that you can do but uh, you do believe two hours is too low and if Duration base was to come for on streets. You would think that three hours would be better. Three hours, no. I think it takes two hours to get through the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. It's sure. just busy. Don't yeah. say absolutely. Sure. And we don't want to make it too high because we're trying to get 
the yeah. employees to not rate. So what's a half shift? Four hours, right? Wow. So you know, two, three hours. I think that's good, and you can always you can always be monitoring it and seeing you know, and, and um, our studies all not just quantitative based. Like this is why we take we do these these, these uh, PICs as well and have these roundtables because we understand that we can't just know exactly what's going on just because we, we came six times, right? So this is it's all a combination of stuff, right? So um, so this is this is something we could recommend three hours and then just see how, how it goes and if it needs to be lower or whatnot it could uh, you, know, you could figure that out. And then Donna had said that make it three hours and then maintain the f uh, and then go ahead with the forty dollars. Is that yeah does that make sense? So you bring it in forty I wouldn't charge forty bucks. You know what? I've gotten five dollar tickets here when I first moved here, and I was like, "This is a joke." Yeah. 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 And when I got me my being license, from whatever. Toronto, me being yeah. from Toronto, yeah. and, uh, like necessarily, I wouldn't because it's my industry. I, I respect this. However, people that aren't like that, I know my acquaintances and friends coming. If they were to come here and they saw, they know that it's a five dollar ticket, I guarantee you they're not going to pay for parking because they they'd rather yeah. deal with it. So if right. you are a tourist. You are. You know, you, you cater to tourism all the time, and so based off of many municipalities, I'm not comparing it to Toronto. It was it's municipalities that are you know have that right of tour, tourist based, or they have um, they have the same amount of the same type of demographics or same population. So this is something that we we determine that it is thirty dollars is too low, and and uh, we do strongly recommend it goes up to forty. Everybody, that could be dovetailed with the attitude of the enforcement program too. Yep. So there's Toronto has a, an attitude of zero tolerance. Yeah. Whereas you can still have an attitude of um, we want you here, here's your warning. Yeah. Yes. yes. And that was what I was trying to that was what I was trying to say about this season. Uh, um, what I was you know, she trying to say but then you guys had so much good points about something else I didn't correct myself. That's pretty much what it is, what I what I had meant when I said wait till you can you can wait till next season before you get aggressive. Like you could start with warning people, you know, more, more on the warning <laughs> side, and then reduce the warnings, and then and then get get more on the aggressive side if need be. There's also options right now, in, in um, there's options where if you pay the ticket within seven days, you get yeah. you get a reduce. Right. So these are all those sort of lax things you can you can take care of. I sit on the OPP board, and what they do at the beginning of the season, they'll go out, they'll spend, they actually do a pretty heavy presence on the lakes, and they go and they spend some time on education pieces. So it's, it's more of that little bit of a warning. So Because a lot of these people are coming through several times. It's not like they're just coming here once. Yes. Um, exactly. So maybe a, at the beginning, a little bit of, you know, friendly reminders. Yes. Um, and then as we get really heavy and there's no parking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is another point to uh, the collective of all of your colleagues as business owners knowing uh, or giving the same message out to your customers. Like on street parking is three hours, it's paid. If you're wanting to stay for longer, then can I suggest that you look for parking here, here, and here, or somewhere so that you're yes. educating everybody on best the communication. Practices. Absolutely. Um, and then overnight parking, so parking overnight, especially during you know, slow, snow plow season and whatnot. So right now it's $20, uh, and we would, uh, based off of our best practices review, we'd like to recommend that goes up to $30. Um, so some of our, for, uh, to give you some examples, some of our, um, our other um, municipalities like Georgina charges $300. So we, you know, we didn't recommend it. We didn't add that into our average. Looking at everyone else, um, there it's still on the lower side. So we'd like to recommend that that goes up to thirty dollars a month. Well, along with that, I would actually like to hear how that is going to be resolved because I had an issue with a neighbour once parking his tractor trailer on the road overnight. They mm -hmm. found by law. Well, guess what? We don't like, we don't work until five pm. Mm -hmm. So they won't come out after hours. Okay, so um, what's it's the point having an uh, it, There's no point changing it if you you can make it a hundred dollars. So it just wouldn't matter because it don't go out. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in Lindsay too, for left on Francis Street, cars left like week. No, 
And you can tell it's because it's all yeah. around. Wow. You need to be on the plow. Sure. Yeah. The plow drivers should be like bylaw officers temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, that would work. Yeah. You get over the cab and all it is is a gun now. You just, uh, with a photograph thing, it puts a ticket out. You don't even have to read anything. So to clarify before the public meeting tonight, would the park pay display parking go away in the fall? Um, well, we would, I think it would make sense. Well, here, here's the issue. Employees are here year round. You know, what do you think? Do you think that it should be like dealing with the employees? It could be removed or you know, paused or, or whatnot till the winter time, so it's still free parking, but then you have to have the bylaw enforce, enforcement like some sort of enforcement, right? But then if you're only doing proactive in the summertime, if winter's not an issue with employees parking on the street and whatnot, it doesn't it doesn't need to be year round if you don't think so. I just want to kind of clarify that because that's going to be a big question for locals filling this room up if they come tonight. That'll be an issue because, you know, they'll be asking that they don't want to pay you around. So sure. I don't feel it is an issue in the wintertime or in the fall. Maybe it's not so much. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Labor Day. That's probably the last big deal. So maybe Thanksgiving for you guys, possibly. Yeah. So to understand after the, the, heavy, the heavy period, Thanksgiving or Labor Day, Labor Day or whatnot, the, there's no need for a two-hour or three hour on street duration, and there's no need for uh, pay and display yes. or whatever yeah. approach we take. So, with a three hour duration, I just, I'm just i thinking in terms of my uh, rental customers that are there all day, what do they do? They just put more money in the pay display and make them longer? Is that the, how you do that? Um, there's there's various options. It depends on what approach you take. If, if, that's the, if, that, if it's pay and display, that's what you would do. If it's an app, you would just oh, buy, yeah, that's right. buy more time. Okay. Yeah, so it depends on the approach. Like, I'm, I'm, um, I think that uh, pay by plate is the best is the best one to go with. Either, either go through the app, like a third party pay by one. Like, they're also pay by plate, or getting the machines that are pay by plate. The reason for that is one, you don't need to walk with the ticket lock back to your car. You're mm -hmm. literally just just doing it on your phone. If you don't have a cell phone or data or whatnot, there's pay by text, which some, some providers have. So you would set up on, on your computer, uh, you put your license plate information in, you would, you'd have your accounts and your credit card info, and then you would just text or call uh, the number and let them know what the zone is based off of where you're parked and how much time you want, and then it goes, it, it goes from there. And the good thing with that is it makes uh, it makes license, it, it makes enforcement so much more efficient because uh, with the that you were talking about the digital handhelds, uh, they're uh, license plate recognition handhelds, and they what they do is digital digitally chalk. So instead of with the chalk, they're and they all speak with each other. So if one if, if one chalked it, you know, uh, identified it at this time, then the next one came and it you know it's beyond, then they would be able to just on the spot print the tickets. And, and, put it. and then if if it's teamed up with a third party app, a lot of third party apps right now, they um, they uh, they have uh, they collaborate with license plate enforcement. So the, the the two machines, like the 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 user system on the personal phone and the enforcement officer's handhelds, they they uh, they communicate. So if it's, if it's uh, if it shows one thing, the app will let them know that, oh, uh, this person already paid. So it all communicates with each other. So in my opinion, license plate recognition, pay by license plate, any of that stuff is, is uh, the preferred alternative. But with pay, pay and display, to answer your question, it would be you'd have to go back and pay and then you'd have to you'd put it if uh, that's how the, the setup is. Okay. Yes. I know. The yeah, the app, yes. yeah. So it depends on the depends on the street, right? Like pay, maybe pay by plate. Uh, from our understanding, Lindsay might not fully work out because because of the, uh, the demographic. However, if you're in a tourist town, maybe okay. maybe it could it could work. Can you do a combo with both? Uh, well, yeah, Wonder. you could do yeah. anything you want. Yeah. But it costs much the more. Yeah, types but of like if you only had one on. pay and display in a certain area, and this is the pay and display area for people who don't know how to use, you know what I mean? Sure. There's, you can do okay. lots of things. Dave, would some of you, would it be 
feasible for some of your customers to not park on the street and park in the, the parks? The Parks Canada property, yeah. But Saturday, it depends on the hour. At 8 o'clock in the morning, there's nobody there. So that is feasible. There's two properties in the trans Waterway. There's one right here, and the other one is down here. So that one is used less than this one. This one is a little more used, but you know, again, they have, I think they have a five dollar fee or whatever on it, I believe, a turnstile or something. I don't know if that's, yeah, it's been broken for the last year, but that one is the most feasible one. That's the second most feasible. We can, we can move most of the people over there. We try to recommend that anyways, but it's hard, it's hard to argue that there's nothing, there. there's no meters there. I'm gonna park right there, right in front of our store. That's mm -hmm. the lazy ones, they do that. And we say, no, it's handicapped. Well, I don't see the markings. I went through this the other day. I don't see the markings. Well, come on, there's not, no markings, but handicapped people can't get in our store. So we move them over this side when it's slow, but otherwise we try to get them over to here. But, but yeah, it's, it's we get there, we direct them. I'm there in the morning, I say, go there, go there. You know, But when there's no meters there, it's hard to make them go further away. That's the problem. Makes sense, no? But yes. Well, at the very least, I think you to consider you know, say, pay, pay, putting parking spaces from the bridge on Front Street down to the dam. That's, that's an excellent, it's sort of a little underutilized corner. It's not going to take anything from the park because yeah. it's already kind of like a gravel area along the edge there, anyways. But people park there anyhow, right? But if you, if you organize it into a parking, that's right, it's sufficient yeah. way that you can But park. not quite as big as the ones on Bolton Street. I don't know if anybody's ever parked on Bolton Street. It's huge. Yeah. I can drive right into it. <laughs> Yeah, there's They're huge. very long parking spaces for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need that, though. No, I know, but I don't know how to pair the park, so I'm fine with it. So the people can assume then that maybe there's going to be no pay display after Thanksgiving because I don't want to get it yes. with all these people saying we wanted them. Um, Paying your rent, so. No, no. Okay. So are we going to say Thanksgiving or Labor Day? Are we going to say Labor Day? Well, what do you think makes sense? Labor Day, Thanksgiving. Labor Day, probably. Yeah. Never really, you can see almost immediately after yeah. the Labor Day weekend, the drop off in traffic is, you probably get drop, lose probably 30, 40% of your traffic. Well, I'm thinking Thanksgiving because number one, that's when the locks shut down. Mm -hmm. That's when people have to be in the trailer parks. I know. And that's when really world. everything yeah. stops. Everything does stop, yeah. but it really is Literally reduced all. after yeah. that. Well, Thanksgiving, the fall's good, and Thanksgiving really is the end of our busy season. Yeah. Our volume does really go down almost 50% right after the yeah. day. Yeah. That's a mean yeah. so It's manageable after that. So absolutely. Yes. We okay. don't have the parking issues after Labor Day. Yeah. Yeah. But then you. Yeah, if, if you were but to until on Saturday, Saturday, I mean, yeah. literally, it still is there. It's sure. just like the summer yes. on a Saturday. Yeah. And with your own private, let's say you were to go with the payment approach yeah. in your lot, you know, you you would have your own freedom to choose when you want to stop your, Correct. your payments, right? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be with, with uh, the street. You have the risk of, oh, people, like, there's the opportunity for them to park, you know, on the street and you know, just walk in from your front door, right. or there's there's a risk that they want to park there. You're you're charging, so they're gonna go elsewhere, or it may just all work out, and, and you can just have it on during a busy weekend, right. and then during the week it's off. So you have that that way. So just to clarify on that, if you all decide, and I'm in agreement with you, that you're going to have pay and display throughout the town, I can't really be involved in that, but I still have to meter that wall, or I'm going to suffer. Right. But I would have, I could have different, whatever, whatever. Yes, different rules and different, because it is a private lot. So right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, then I still have to finance that. That, I, that's, that's a little bit, that's beyond there, there, that, that could be a problem, because I can't see the municipality doing that unless they were getting the revenue stream from that. So I think I, I'd like to recommend that when you have the discussion with Aaron offline, mm -hmm. um, you have the Solis Council at least get sort of a big picture understanding of you know what your limitations are and what maybe what other at other towns, tourist towns, how they do things, and that way you're you know prepared. So it saves you time as well with you know having to go back and ask something that they've already. No, but it's not going to be. I'm sure Grand Bend has these same issues, mm -hmm. even actually more worse than ours. I'd like to know how they, they deal with it mm -hmm. because there are two grocery stores that are all right on the main drag, 
right near the beach. Yeah. And I liked, and I'm sure it's worse than what we experienced. Yeah, so with, with Grand Bend, they closed the entrance to the street way, way before the, the bridge, like from the, from the highway turning into the strip, they closed it down as soon as, they get, at, at a certain time period, it's closed down. And you have to, if you can't even get in there, it's fully encouraging of walking. So it's, you're, you're parking kilometers away, and you just know it. Right? I'm from Windsor, I went to Great Bend a lot, and you park outside of the area, but you're just not even out to the grocery stores, man. I know one's a fair hike out, yeah. but there is one. Yeah, um, I honestly don't, I do remember that they charge you to park, like to, to leave your car there to park for the day, like I, I know that, but I don't remember exactly how they do it. Right. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah. What about the parking behind the, the, the BMO in Montreal? What would, would that be neater then, too? So, if it's private, if it's mm -hmm. private parking, um, is it, I think, the P4? Mm -hmm. I think that's P4. Yeah. So, if it's private parking, it's all based off of the, based off of the owners. Mm -hmm. So it can't, it has to be through the discussion. That would be the same situation as you. Yes. And they wouldn't come to the meeting. Yeah. Oh, there's so many businesses, why would they even mm -hmm. think about that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the landlord who owns the parking, not individual businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whoever owns the lot yeah. would, would do the same thing. So it would have to be through um, discussion with them to see what they want. And it could be, there's a very high probability that they may be like, oh, we're fine, we don't care. Right. Yeah. And then it would be, theirs is free and then yours is different. But it's, that is a, that is a possibility as well. And they do have signage on that lot saying, mm -hmm. you know, unauthorized vehicles and all behind shop is drug mart. So they have that and the shop owners are right there. So mm -hmm. it's like you guys, you're so busy and you're in the front, whereas the shop owners, it's way more visible. So sure. I don't know if they have the same issues. Cam hasn't mentioned it, so I don't know. Sure. We'll have to find it from Chuck. He was here last time, so. Well, apparently there's no employee parking in the back there. I was told that's why Doc Aldridge parks out on the street because he's not allowed to park in behind his office there. Mm -hmm. Right? I find that kind of odd. That yeah. would be their lease. <laughs> Ideally, employees would park. Outside yeah, and he shouldn't be parking. He's yeah. he's as an MD, he should be parking right in front of his doctor's office when there's elderly going into the business. I was quite shocked at that. Yeah. Thought that that's not, you know. Mm -hmm. Apparently that's why it is. It's because he can't park in the back. Someone told me the other day. No, well, well, he can park around the corner. Yeah, it makes it easier for people who are actually visiting the doctor's office to get in. Yeah, that's the intent. To that's right. Make it available, you know, revenue. Make it make it available for those coming and spending. You don't want to fill your space up with the employees and yeah. and whatnot. Park and I need to park. Oh, and walk the walk the you know, two hundred meters. What was the consensus of the other two groups that you met, Phantom Falls and Lindsay, regarding pay display parking? Uh, with Lindsay, they don't want to see on street uh, paid parking, and with Fenland Falls, they, I think, I don't even think there's, there's no need for it either. Their, their, um, their parking is more than okay for now yeah. and, and the future. They're, they're not good. But the problem with Fenland Falls, the big thing is wayfinding signage. So even, even me, I've seen, you know, I've, I've come a bunch of times, I, I look at this every single day in the office, I, I know the map, you know like the back of my hand, and when I get out there and I try to find a lot that I know I want to go to, I, I can't find it half the time, you know, be it the, be it the setback uh, or no signage. So the big solution for them is going to be the wayfinding signage and a few other, a few other recommendations that, uh, that's going to help them out as well. So Kathleen, the comment we kind of made was that if we get paid as play here, we want the money mm -hmm. to stay here. Yeah. Is that possible? I think that we could bring that to council. I think that would That's make sense. something like mm -hmm. we shouldn't pay the brunt of it and no. not let it go away. So no. That way, it gives us revenue for other parking lot yes. purchases or long sure. vehicle parking, no mm -hmm. stuff. So, I don't know that answer. However, in Lindsay, when we were having that discussion, those that probably have the answer were discussing how 
paid parking there could go into the structure. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes sense that paid Stays parking here them. would go to whatever. Absolutely. It is. But I don't know the answer. So we'll talk to that. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Lindsay should have it, but none of my business, none of my problem. They have said, they have said, they have seen an increase in business since they took out their meters. It's really nice surprising. Yeah. I think they it's just because the shops are nicer. Yeah. So it, it is hard to know um, what triggers what. Right? Mm -hmm. There are so many variables that are going on at a particular point in time. But mm -hmm. they, as a community, they seem very convinced that taking out the parking units was a considerable factor, if not the factor, to improve any. Were these independent retailers or the BIA that spoke on their behalf? So the BAA said they're speaking on behalf of the business owners. Uh, I, I get that. I don't get that independently. I get that from the BIA because the BIA they are very powerful. So uh, just an observation. Yes, As, and there were some others that were that spoke up that um, are not they don't form the board of the long-standing board of the BAA. They don't the same as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I can't find parking there anymore. No, me either. No. I mean, there are many so I go other places. places. Okay. Well, no, I don't stop. Oh, okay. Okay. Where I would have stopped before. There's construction issues there right now to oh, make yeah. it more limited, but there's no parking, uh, accessible parking mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. Do you see Lindsay like we do here as a hot tourist destination in June, July, no. August? No. I don't. No. 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 And I can understand why they don't want parking because they're going to go even farther. Yes. To prove that their peak period was actually in the winter time. Mm -hmm. right? well, so that, that's interesting. I can see why they don't want that's it. That's a good point. Why I think we believe we do need it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Totally different. Yeah. And Fallon no absolutely no. Fallon don't want it at all because they had money coming in like gravy in back ten years ago. That's uh, never been a topic of discussion mm -hmm. with, with, with the uh, our first PIC or the second PIC, and then with our quantitative. Assessments, there was no need for us to recommend such an approach. Mm -hmm. so just I don't see Fenland yeah, being the destination, the tourist destination that this town is to an outsider. Sure. Fenland to me is just a bypass through and I can stop and I can go to Sobeys, I can grab a coffee. Here, this is a destination for a tourist with the big ones, with the locks with the restaurants. It's actually, you can spend the entire day here, which I don't see that so much from a drive-in. The boating, absolutely. They boat the dock, they join the restaurants, a little bit of shopping. We have all that, and that's our unique problem. In the compact area. Yes. And the other issue is most of the parking is private, right? So right. in front of the falls, they have a decent amount of municipal yeah. It's actually mm -hmm. more municipal than private, right? This is the unique situation with Bob Cajun. That's the big one. Whatever you do on street, it's going to affect the off street. So the more rules you put on the on street, the municipal lots are going to be impacted because people are going to try to avoid that and go to the lots, right? So then you have that. That's packed. So what, what's going to happen next? The private lots are going to be impacted, right? So you have to find that balance where you're not you're solving it and you're not just pushing the problem elsewhere, right? But they bought those municipal lots because of revenue. That's how they bought it. They didn't. Mm -hmm. No revenue, no lots. This, the council at that time bought the lots with the revenue they're collecting from the parking. Um, only other thing with the long vehicle parking question being more on the disagreement side, I'm hoping that we could bring that discussion again and see um, so the last time you had mentioned that just just uh, just uh, uh, there's a Tim Hortons, yeah, oh, the the the, 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 the Tim Hortons, and then there's that section of the lot you had recommended. Um, are there any other locations that would make sense? You still feel yeah, that the that's arena, the it's arena, very close to the beach that. park. So that's probably the, the yes, it's very close. So that's probably the best one. So yeah. I have they can launch their boats, yes, and then move it over. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? That's probably the, the best one. It makes the most sense. Yeah. Okay. And I have that in my notes for the arena. Yeah. Well, no wonder how much uh, boat traffic you could direct to um, Walmart Shores. 
And that's a perfect little put in down there. Look at that, that uh, frying pan, just like just a Pigeon Lake Road. Yeah. Put you in the Pigeon Lake, and there's lots of parking there. Uh, is that owned by the city? I don't know. Is it a public boat launch? If it is. I don't know. I, I know everyone puts the boat, or lots of people put the boat yeah. in there. But I don't think it's, I don't think that it is use, utilized as it might be. Because Gordon's is like a real nightmare. Yeah, Gordon's is busy and I'm on Scotch Line and that's busy now too, so they're parking all the way up to Scotch Line now, which mm -hmm. I don't care. You just slow down. Could you provide me with more context on that? Is that within our study area or walking distance or? No. It's no. outside. Okay. No, it's outside. It's just outside of Occasion on uh, Virginia Lake Road. Sure. So our, our, so there's probably different options like that, but we have to consider those with their trailers, you know, with their trailers or their hitches or, or whatnot coming in, you know, to come to food land or to, or to do so. so it's not just about the lunch, you know, we want to also make sure that those who are not, you know, releasing it elsewhere and they're bringing it into town on the way in or else they have a place to park so that they're not parking in the middle of the city taking over. Yeah. Where are they going now to, to park with the trailers and all the sides of the street, all over the place, yeah. like the yeah. Wildlands, yeah. Wildlands, yeah. Wildlands, all over, I feel sorry for the Riverside people down Riverside Drive, they're all blocked off, they have signs out, they block off their vehicles or customers all the time. Yeah, yeah I saw someone with a sea view hitch with a sea view and Lindsay was wearing like a weird sea view. Now they're moving up the side streets, they're moving up the side streets in the opposite directions too, all through, all through the, all direct pro proximity to the boat ramps. Pretty much. Well, I know this was the first year that on two of the long weekends you, you couldn't find parking spot anywhere. No. Like every single side street was absolutely jam packed with traffic. I, I mean, I've never, I've never actually seen when you can't walk down Bolton Street without turning sideways. No. I mean, it was just an incredibly busy year this year. Yeah. Economic development's been doing a great job in our area. <laughs> Tourism and no, you know, really, it, it's been the community working together and the shops bringing everything up, and, and it really is, it's it's a destination and it's becoming more so. People are coming here and saying, Oh my gosh, what a great place! Yeah. Like, that's true. I was excited to, to, <laughs> to <laughs> I came early enough to, to you know, like I said, last time I least, and I'm really happy to be here. So. Uh, can we just uh, explore your concern about? Um, Trailers getting into your parking lot because we did talk about it last time. Yes, and you and I experienced that firsthand this summer. Mm -hmm. We we had trailers. Oh, the tractor trailers just stuck. Is if everybody were parking as they should and being incredibly well behaved, can your tractor trailers still get in? If they know how to drive. No. What the, the only the only way to to do that <laughs> is you have to block off, there's like two spots right there on William Street looking into our lot. And these spots, there's a, hydrant, there's a hydrant there, and then these spots there. Because what happens, this is the way they're supposed to come in. Then they back up, they go in. And if there's a car there, car there, car there, they can't do it. They just physically cannot do it. It's impossible. And that's, we have to block those spots completely during my, it was, yeah, during yes. our rolling times, which are sporadic. How many delivery trucks do you get? Yeah. A billion. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. We probably get two to three, <laughs> 50, three foot trailers every day. Yeah. Every day. Anything. Sometimes all at once. Yeah, and that happens all at once. Mornings or afternoons or always? In the summer, our grocery deliveries, which are key deliveries, we have them switched in the evening which generally never causes a problem. Mm -hmm. It's the fresh deliveries that are the issue. Um, we try to get them before 10 o'clock, that's not a problem. But I cannot, get, I always cannot guarantee that. We have a window, it's a four hour window, and it, it's roulette, it's just where it's gonna land. Um, but that is the problem that literally, we, they cannot turn it in. Staff and other businesses park there, and I get that where they park. But you literally would have to make certain spots there no parking. Yeah. And that's, well, that's, that's the solution to the situation. Like that. Yeah. We deal, with, <laughs> we deal with. We deal with. 
I have a you know, cause the same way traffic comes out of parking lots because I'm also a traffic engineer. And, you know, we do quite a bit of access management and dealing with that. And the big solution is the signage, the book to stop. You can either you can even paint the yeah. and then proactive enforcement. It's just and we have to we have to look at that regardless of this outcome. Literally, that is another issue that we have to take more parking spots out of the core to alleviate the nightmare of getting trucks in there. Well, we want school fires to have staff parking. Yeah, we, we do that. If we know we when we know it's going to be a busy weekend, we have our staff park so there. So when the trucks show up, then we work. and then we then we try and find. Parking for our staff as it is, but then we're at the mercy of where we're going to go, mm -hmm. which is not an issue. It's more important to get the truck in. Mm -hmm. so, though you comment that it would be removing three spaces, it could potentially more. leave a parking issue if trucks could have that free flow any time of day, and then you're not dealing with people being stuck here, there, and everywhere for hours on end. Right, right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you have, you're going to give up three to four parking spots minimum, but then we're not going to be tying up, just like you say, a, a truck stuck in our lot. And contrary to everyone's opinion, based off of our observations, especially especially this year, you sh it should be fine if you were if that street was to lose three parking spaces. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we would never, I would not have problems getting the trucks in there. And it wouldn't affect parking demand. No, based off of well, you're going to eliminate three or four spots. That it, it doesn't matter. It's full all the time anyway. It's just that's a separate issue, which is great that we need to address that as well. What happens to the United Church parking lot? What happens there? Is it full? Nobody ever uses that that I can tell. Yeah, that might be a. So there, there are opportunities for for people just don't. For whatever reason, they don't think to park in the church parking lot. Well, it is it's private property. Yes, it course. is still private. However, in the past, in, in past previous studies, we've also recommended it um, for you know for very recent parking studies that you, you do it. You can correlates would have a partnership with, with the church to during their off off peak periods. So but what happens? They, they have park their weddings, funerals, all that kind of thing. You know, it would just be jammed. So there's a give and take with that. You know, I have a safety discussion. Oh, yeah. And what, which church was? United uh, the one in United Valley Park. Park. Just, just north I of the I think it's right there. Yeah. There. yeah. 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 There's an Anglican church as well. We mentioned it at the last meeting. Yeah. Which yeah. is oh, at uh, Sherwood yeah. and 24. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, Canal Street is being redone. And one side of it, we're going to lose all the parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just Can learned about, about that. So Adam had uh, mentioned that this past Tuesday. So mm -hmm. as we said, we're, we haven't finalized anything, so we're still on the recommendation stage. So um, Adam Fallon will be providing uh, this information to me. And from there, we'll be updating our numbers based off of that. And then if there's any changes or, or whatnot, plus all of the feedback today, we're, um, we're, you know, we'll be reassessing and dealing with because I, I think they're looking at expanding the parking lot down by the canal the restaurant, the Water's Edge, um, expanding that more, and then putting some parking on the void side as well. Well, since you've since you've seen them, maybe you could. You could so that that is that is that or, is yeah. the plan. Can you let me know where? Yeah. <laughs> so we're on Canal Street here. So, so, so right here where it's green. So the entire. So Canal Street where it's green on the water side. That's going to be a multi-use trail. Okay. So right now it's parking, but it's dangerous parking. Um, okay. You fall off if you get out of your car, get down the town. So that that'll be a multi-use trail, and on this side will be parking, um, and along here this will be expanded. They're looking at expanding that, and then putting some parking on this side. So there's going to be well. more parking. Oh, yes, I don't know if it'll just even out, but they are removing it from this side. They so want a trail all the way along. Okay, so yeah. they're removing on the north side, yeah. and then they're maintaining the same thing on the south side, mm -hmm. and then with the expansion of M3, does that mean it's getting replaced with 
a trail or expanding it into more? They want to expand the parking. They have to work with Trent Southern Waterway on that because the Trent Southern right. Waterway yes. owns this land. Yes. Now, this land is owned by a group of people, but they're going to have to take some of this land away, and they're looking at parking along the bridge to one the side. Okay, great. And they're smoothing out that corner because this is not a very safe corner. So yeah. it's going to come more along here. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's paved and, and painted. Yes. Because every time we've we've looked at it, the cars are parked in a different, oh, park different park way, and, and, and different you know, different direction, whatnot. Mm -hmm. So by having some sort of uh, consistent, efficient, uh, effective way to have the most amount of vehicles. And that again, would that that would be part of the pay and display? I would think. I would hope. It, um, so that would be. It would depend on yeah. how does it, the discussion goes if all parking and all caging, including the municipal private lots, are, are paid mm -hmm. or not. And I think that's something that it would need much much further discussion to see if it's feasible. And, you know. If you didn't, then the employees would park there. there. Then one of the drawbacks is now you have your on street and the municipal lots paid. You're, you're forcing everyone into private. So Typically, we would always recommend that the street you get, get you charge and try to get high turnover, and then those who want to park for a longer period of time, that's the option they would have. They go to the parking lot and, um, and park for a long period of time. And by making that less accessible, the public lots, you're now causing people to want to break laws with, okay. with parking in private lots, right? So it's the opposite of what okay. you want to do, essentially. So you paid the premium for being on the street? Yes, okay. exactly. And then you get high turnover and based off of past studies with, with uh, past case studies with, with um, these sort of paid parking kind of stuff. Um, you, um, by increasing turnover, you're actually bringing more people into your business, mm -hmm. and, you know, more new people into your business, which is, Instead of getting people to window shop now, they have less mm -hmm. time to window shop, so it's coming in to purchase. Next people come in to mm -hmm. purchase. And, yeah. Anything else? I can't see somebody not coming into Bob Cajun because they have to pay the parking and then going to Femme and Falls no. instead. I can't see that. I think we're far enough away from the, another center that they'll stay. Because you want to come to Bob Cage yeah. because yeah. you're coming to Bob Cage. Yeah. yeah, I think there's enough of uniqueness between yeah. the two that um, it wouldn't be a. Yeah. So, back to the pay display issue, what hours would a pay display operate normally? Till 6 o'clock or when? Depends on the situation. So, you'd look at, you would look at your peak period. So, right now, for example, we, we observed it during the daytime. So, what would make sense is during business hours, you have, you have it running and after that it's it's free or, or whatever. Yeah. So it all it all depends and there's no right answer. You you have to you you learn by doing. So you do it, you set up a process, you test it out, you monitor, so you, you do just like our traffic counts, you go out and do spot checks, right? 
uh, not the way we did because what we did is very expensive. It's you know having consistent consistent counts, right? So we went out there and for for the whole period, was it 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 8 a.m. to 4 4 p.m. We we consistently went around and counted every single every single lot and determined you know exactly how the how every single lot every single street segment uh, was increasing and decreasing in utilization. So. You wouldn't need to do that. You would just spot check and determine, um, you know, how how things are going, and then from there you can do various tweaks, bring up the price, or change the duration, or change when when uh, parking is free and not free, whatnot. Until you get that magic, that magic sort of utilization number. And our pay display thing would be based on us getting money, right? Yes. It would be based on that. With all, all due respect, I noticed that, you know, like I said, we paid $100,000 for this consultation, and we basically contradicted all the findings in the consultation, and you just said it's many counting parking spots. Can you please explain to everybody here and everybody who's watching why staff couldn't have done that? This study is being run through the engineering department, so Adam is really the one to answer this to you, uh, except to say that the expertise, although it looks like it's really simple, the expertise that are coming through IBI Group because they do this every day and they understand how traffic works, how parking works, it is complicated to some level because if it wasn't, we wouldn't be sitting here having this discussion. I just make it sound super easy. They, they do make it just sound easy. Just communicating to you, however. So how does parking work? It's like a space, you know, it's like eight feet by four, and you pull your car in. You're either upper or lower, angled or parallel. What? This is not rock There's science. three different communities, and they're each different. So you know what? I think it's very important that we have consultation, and we have to have consultation. We can't just do what we want. We have well, the, whole, the, whole the, the whole Caucasian secondary plan, which was to uh, make amendments to the official plan, was all done by staff. This was like six, 16 years of meetings were run by staff. This is nothing compared to the Caucasian, Fenton Falls, Lindsay, uh, Woodville, and only the secondary plan. And we plans. still have a problem with that. So we're moving forward with a consultant. So this is where we are. We've spent the money. This is what we're doing. Well, no, no, and, I'm, and it should be questioned. Every time this is done, this is a complete waste of taxpayers' money because we could have done this. The city could have done this themselves. We are, what are you going to do? Is That's your opinion, Steve. Okay? That's your opinion. We're, we're here and we're moving forward. We've already done it. We're moving forward. And we keep on doing it. That's the problem. Steve, this is what we're doing. Because yeah, you're staff, supposed to, staff you're supposed, can't you're supposed to be listening to us. Yes, staff okay. cannot do this. How are staff going to do this when they're doing their own jobs? That's why we hired the consultants to do it. They know what they're doing. They're professionals. They've come back with a different scenario for every different area. Where do we find the staff to do the core review then? Which core review? Well, and the, the black belts and the green belts and all, all those Which, things were internal reviews. Well, well, and those, they're all working, on, they're all working on different anymore. projects. They're working on different projects. So if you're concerned and find out what the black belts are doing, feel free to call and find out what they're doing. They're working on different projects. So I think that that's what's important, that you know, we, the the secondary plans, we still have problems with them. And you said staff did them. So now staff are not doing things. We're hiring a consultant, and we're moving forward. So this is what we're doing. And if we want to have parking in the area, which we've discussed, and we've discussed at length several times, and I, I think that we've come to a consensus what we need in our village. Well, we haven't actually moved forward because what it says here is that there's no parking problem in Caucasian. And everyone at the same here said, yes, there is a parking problem in Park Cajun. I mean, you know, like, am I, am I mistaken? We just wasted a whole bunch of money here to tell us something that we already didn't know? To clarify that point, what Fanny is saying is that the system as a whole has some capacity. So how the... Um, Our goal is to spread it out in a way that there's no major issues. Apart from your unique situation, everything else, it's a matter of spreading it out in a way that you don't have that issue. Right? Well, I, was, I will agree that we will have moved forward 
when you take on board our recommendations, put in the angle parking, put in the paint display, and have a temporary student uh, walking the streets with a machine to uh, resolve the parking. This is what we discussed three, four months ago. Oh, but I'm saying yeah. when it's actually implemented. Yeah. Because right now, up until this meeting, it wasn't, nothing was going to be implemented because we don't have a problem, apparently. No, that's I not true. I think you're mistaken if you look at the boards. We did discuss enforcement, so I, it doesn't, you know, it didn't, we didn't discuss whether or not it's a full time employee with benefits or, or whatnot. That's not my job. Yeah, but the meeting for line is over there where it says that we don't have a parking problem in Bob Cajun as far as you're concerned. Based off of our surveys, however, as I said previously, we've only come out here six times and we don't just base it off of our numbers, right? We do consultation, we do public consultation, we've met with stakeholders twice, we've had online surveys, we've had, we've, we've had the online surveys, we've even extended it, and no matter how much we communicate, we still aren't getting as much feedback as you're, you're saying that um, there's 110, 120 business owners that didn't know about this. However, there was, there's been opportunity, and there still is, to provide feedback, and I'm glad you're, you know, you're taping it, so, now, in addition to this, we're fully, we have our contact information out there, call us, email us, comment sheets, whatever, let us know how, you know, what your thoughts are, and this is, it's not just whatever we've observed, that's it, right? It's through this discussion, and your points that you're saying, and I complimented you on, on the points that you had emailed, because I've read through them and I fully understand, you've repeated yourself with exactly what you had said, so that's already, you know, I've already, observe that and we we have that and we understand we're taking our recommendations from what we saw as well as what we've discussed here as well as public feedback that's going to be coming right now and our online surveys and our and, and whatnot and taking it and coming up with the recommendations right and i look forward to hear, hearing your final recommendations sure sounds good okay uh bible two now if there's anything else uh, to discuss, otherwise